I just wanted to share a headcanon I had because of Steve's college essay, but it's a really good example of this framework I've been developing, so please just indulge me some theory for a second. In Understanding Comics, Scott McCloud talks about this concept called closure, which refers to the human ability and instinct to perceive parts and understand a whole. For example, seeing these comic panels and filling in that the guy in the back attacks the guy in the front. But what I love about that space between images, which is called the gutter in comics, is that you have so much agency there as the reader. We can fill in that between here and here, the guy in back attacked the guy in front, but we could also fill in that the guy in front turned around and got the other one, or that a third person came in and got both of them, or they both got abducted by aliens, or that this is a completely different building and event and people. The gutter, the space between moments, contains infinite possibility. And to me, it is analogous to the way that transformative fandom works with canon. And there's actually a quote from the third doctor that I think sums this attitude up well. The shortest distance between two points may be a straight line, but that is by no means the most interesting. So I know I shit on them a lot, but the inconsistencies, the absences and holes in Stranger Things are some of my favorite parts of it because they feel like puddles that I get to go jump and play in. So with this framework, I want to talk about a few of my favorite gaps and the interesting lines that I use to fill in the space between them. So one way to use this model is to actively like fix something that's probably a mistake in the show. And one of my favorite examples of that is Dustin's parents. In season one, Dustin worries that Mrs. Wheeler is going to tell his parents, plural, about Elle. And there's a couple standing behind him at Will's funeral. But then in season two, we meet Claudia, who is not the woman who was standing behind him and is not wearing a wedding ring. So the straight line approach here says that the Duffers forgot or didn't care that they'd already established something about Dustin's home life. But with the more interesting line approach, we could imagine maybe that's Dustin's dad and his stepmom. Or we could say that it is his parents, even though it doesn't look like Claudia, and then ask what happened to his dad between season one and two? Did he pass away? Did they get divorced? Who knows? But that's what's fun. And another thing that's fun is filling in a hole that's not really a hole in a way that makes the hole more interesting, which is what I'm kind of trying to do with Steve's essay. In this essay, Steve describes winning the championship game under unlikely circumstances, and I think it's fun to imagine that this game took place in March of 1983, his sophomore spring, that prior to this game, he had been like a lower classman nobody, and that throwing this winning shot is what made him King Steve. I think an event like that would make sense of his sort of nebulous conditional popularity that we see in season one. It would make him writing about it in season two even more poignant because it's the season where he loses that crown, and it would be such a meaningful way for for him to connect with Lucas, who goes through very similar things at the beginning of season four. And as much as I want to talk about how emotional it makes me to think of Lucas being the first one since Steve to win a championship for Hawkins, I don't have time. So thanks for indulging me. Bye. <laughs>